All right, in this lesson, we're going to write exponents into logarithms, logarithm functions and decimals, and we are going to solve the equation when we're using logarithms. Now, listen up for those who are watching this video. Part of this video is not going to have what was taught to you guys in class today. Remember, some of you due to a lack of homework, had to watch this video to answer the worksheet that was given. So, please be mindful of that. Alright, before we get into that, let's talk about black history mathematicians. Now, in this person that we are talking to, she wasn't a mathematician at all. She was a fantastic dancer. She was a musician. She was a spy. The first black spy, actually. Well, the first black spy of the 20th century who saved Europe from calamity of Germany. And not only just that, she even fought for the civil rights of black folks in America. Before we get into her, remember, mathematics is the technique to teach, learn, and manage reality by ciphering, counting, measuring, classifying, ordering, inferring, and modeling patterns arising in the environment. That's what, what this definition is about. That's all we're doing in mathematics. Mathematics is nothing but techniques, nothing else. All right, this beautiful lady is Miss Josephine Baker. She was born in America first during the early 1900s. And she died, I mean, was born in St. Louis. Missouri, and then she died in France, 1975. But she, like I said, self out the precise definition of mathematics because she used her rational numbers to cipher information in her song sheets to liberate France under Nazi rule. Again, ciphering is one of the parts that we don't talk too much about in mathematics, but we use numbers and symbols to code information to other people. Now, hopefully later on in the school year, before we finish, I can show you how to, you know, do a little fun activity of coding. All right. And this is her back in her heyday. You know, that picture was of her, of a color picture of her. And again, she was born in the early 20th century, so she died in the 70s. This is before I was born. This is before you guys was even, even thought of. Alright. So, I gave a test to some of you guys to do your revision, so just do them and prepare for the real thing. Remember, to do this process, got to be independent from the dome. Independent from the notes. Group work with a peer. Revision with the teacher. That's how that process goes, just like that. Exponentials to logarithms. How do we write them? So, before we continue, just remember exponents are repeated multiplication all right so i guess i'm really done but okay the logarithm of x with the base b is defined as log b that b represent your base x is the answer and y is the exponent if and only if b to y power equals x so again logarithms 
are inverses of exponent. So for example, if I have 5 squared, we know for a fact 5 squared is 25. We know that. Well, when we're doing the logarithm of this, it's going to be log. And your base, again, is B. So that's going to be 5. And then your X is going to be your answer, which is 25. Now, before I put down the 2, I want you guys to understand what the log is saying. So the log is saying this. What exponent? Well, 5 to what power? 5 to what power gives you 25? And the answer of that is 2. Again, a logarithm is saying is asking you to find the exponent of the base. Again, the logarithm is asking you to find the exponent. That's all you are doing, really. Find the exponent. Now, in these examples, they're going to be placed differently all over the place. So here, run an exponential form and write the exponential equation in logarithm form. So 7 to a power of 0 equals 1. So when you rewrite this, this 7 is your base. So 7 is your base. So log 7. So 7, you're trying to find out 7 to what power gives you 1, which is 0 in this case. Again, logarithms, you are asking the question of the to find the exponent, you will find the exponent of a base, given the answer. So 7, again, we're trying to find 7 to what power gives you 1, which is 0. Well, let's do this one. This is more in line with what I'm talking about in detail. So, 4 to what power gives you 4? And when you do that, that's going to be 1. Alright. So, 8 to the power of 1 equals 8. So, that's the exponential form. So, the base of this is 8. So again, it's asking you 8 to what power gives you 8. And that's the power of 1. Not bad. It's that simplistic. And I know many people are like, Mr. I still don't get it. You're just overthinking it because it's so simplistic. All right, write the logarithmic equation in exponential form. Now, we're going backwards. So here, you don't have a base, don't you? You have nothing under here. That's because when you have a log by itself, a log has a base of 10. A log by itself has the base of 10. The log by itself has a base of 10. So log x is essentially just the base is 10. Again, the base is 10. 
I think I repeated that long enough. So the answer to this is going to be 10 to the power of 2 is 100. So when you see this log, it's saying 10 to what power gives you 100, which is 2. All right. So why don't you find this out? So try this one. Pause the video and see what you can come up with on your very own. Welcome back. I've taken it that you have tried this. If you have not, please pause the video and try it. But for those who did, let's get on to it. So, 10 to the power of 3 is 100. Remember, log is asking you for your base, which we know when there's nothing underneath here, we already know that that's 10. That's base 10. So, it said 10 to what power gives you 1,000. So, 10 to the power of 3 equals 1,000. So you got this right. Good job. All right. So why don't you try this one out? And remember, we don't have no base underneath here. That is understood to be a base 10. So you try this one for yourself. And move on. I'm not going to give you the answer for this one because this is something that you could do independently. Okay, logarithmic graphs. Remember, logarithmic and exponential are inverses of each other. So, remember. A logarithmic function, the domain will always change. Your range is forever, ever, forever, ever, 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 ever stay the same. Your asymptote is vertical. So wherever that is. And remember, an asymptote is where it gets close to, but never touches. Or at some point it does, but when it does, it becomes undefined. All right? And you are struggling with the word asymptote. Go back to previous videos and do that. Your intercepts. Sometimes you're going to have a Y intercept, but majority of the time, you're going to have X. Sometimes, again, you will have a Y, but majority of the time, it's going to be an x in itself. It depends on the function. And your inverses are always going to be exponential. So, this is the template of a logarithmic function. This is a template of a logarithmic function. So, it does not matter what logarithmic function you put in. It is going to be just like that. All right, so this graph right here is just showing you an inverse. So the blue is the exponential, the red is the logarithmic. This is proof that these are inverses. So remember, in order for a graph to be, in order for a function to be inverse, that means that the points, the coordinate points, like one zero, has to be zero one. All right, so I want you to go to Desmos and try to put this in. If you are struggling with this, for those who have never been in class, just come see me. I'm going to show you how to put in Desmos. But for those who have, you should know how to do this. So again, the graph, you're going to go over all the characteristics 
Everything that I have described is what you should have. So your domain of this function, when you put this in, is going to be zero to infinity. Your domain to find it out, you just got to know your vertical asymptote. Your range is going to be all real numbers. Remember I told you, your range is going to be all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity, depending on how you want to write it behind it. Your asymptote is x equals 0. So that just means, means they get close to 0 or never touches because if it does, it becomes undefined. So... You say x cannot be 0 because if it does, it becomes undefined. So x cannot equal 0 because if it does, it becomes undefined. x cannot equal 0 because if it does, it's going to be undefined. And because of that, we could get our domain to be 0 to infinity.